Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Juniper. I'm the managing producer for Feldenkrais Access. And I'm so happy to be here with you all for a live chat with Garrett Newell, who will be um, presenting a new class series this Thursday called New Beginnings. Garrett, would you like to say something before we get started? Well, just that it's been a real pleasure to plan this course uh, called New Beginnings because um, it's a nice time of year for new beginnings. And it's also a very important part of our uh, memory is that we did have this early time in our life where we learned a lot in the first year of life. And my, um, my desire is to pass on some of that um, enthusiasm to you that I have for looking at how you, what we can still learn from how we learned in the first place. Wonderful, thank you, Garrett. And um, welcome to those of you who are joining us on Instagram. I'm sorry for the delay. We had difficulty getting our stream started, but I'm so glad that we're all together now. Garrett, one question that I have is, I know that the course that you are offering is founded in early childhood development. And I'm wondering if you could talk about how the unfolding of early childhood relates to the challenges we experience in our maturity. Well, basically it relates a lot because we learned all our skills in the first year of life. And some of the learning in the first year of life went very well and wasn't interfered with. And some of it was actually interfered with in some way or another. And that can often reflect later on in life in terms of what becomes easy to do or easy to learn. It can reflect in some challenges that um, people might have. It can reflect in the enjoyment of certain movements that are maybe not so um, comfortable to do. So it is very much connected to our, our life now, whatever stage of life you're in, um, how it is that you, that you experienced and that you learned in that first year of life. Thank you. And I know that you have discussed in the um, in the course description that the Feldenkrais method can increase with confidence. Um, sorry, can help to increase confidence with balance and mobility issues. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, well, the lessons in the Feldenkrais method are, first of all, they're done very slowly and very um, very much paying attention to what you're doing and not necessarily to reaching some kind of goal. And that's actually this organic learning is the way you learned in the first place. You may have had a, a, a goal in terms of you wanted to read something as a baby and you did everything you could to figure out how to get there, but you didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, today I think I'll learn how to roll over. The organic learning happened really out of a curiosity and out of a relationship to the environment and out of some kind of driving force to want to um, make some kind of progress. And so um, this is something that um, everybody has experienced and re-experiencing it can really bring you back in touch with some of the patterns that really support you now in your adult activities. Maybe you can discuss what some of those um patterns and activities are. Okay, so um, yes, so some of the things that, that took place in that early learning was that you, um, you learned, first of all, how to, uh, this sounds kind of simple, but how, how to notice that you have a right side and a left side, and that those two sides uh, relate to one another, and they also relate to one another through a kind of a diagonal relationship. And there's one of the lessons that will address that kind of learning that you have a diagonal relationship. And that relationship is already formulating what's going to make walking as an adult possible. When you walk, you use one leg and you use the opposite arm. And sometimes you can see when people don't walk like that, that maybe there was an opportunity that they didn't have in their early development to, um, to crawl or to do something that developed that cross lateral connection. So that's a great example. And, and very often we use that as a way to illustrate what can um, not take place in the kind of uh, way that it usually does with people who um, don't have any interference with their learning in that stage. So let me take this example a little bit further. Let's say I didn't have a full range of 
experience with my diagonals in my early childhood. And then into maturity, I don't have a full range of movement or a full range of capacity because that wasn't so fully developed. By revisiting it in these lessons, what is then gained? What do I gain from revisiting it in these lessons? Well, let's take the activity of walking that because I mentioned it, walking involves this diagonal relationship between something that's happening in your leg and your pelvis and something that's happening in your arm and your shoulder girdle. And if, um, if one of those places is not activated, there's a lot of people who you see, especially in runners, they run and they hold their shoulders and their upper chest absolutely stiff and the running is taking place in the legs. And that's a very inefficient way of running. And so that's something that when that diagonal can get reestablished, then walking and running and a lot of those activities can be more pleasurable, they can be more efficient, they can be more successful if you happen to be you know, a, a, an athlete that's comp competing in some of those activities. So that would be a, you know, one example that I see a lot, that people who don't use the diagonal relationship, they're really creating a lot of effort in other parts of themselves that could be spread out and made the, make the whole activity more pleasurable. Wonderful. That sounds really compelling. We had somebody write in actually who um, says, I didn't fully crawl as a baby. Will this course be helpful for me? I would like to say, of course, it will be, because one of the things that we will revisit in this course is the, the, the kind of foundations for crawling and then how crawling got developed. It took place over many, many months, had many, many stages. And then how crawling what, it turns out to be a transition to being able to come to sit and come to stand. So often people who don't have that experience of crawling or didn't have it for a long enough period of time, they experience as, as probably in their childhood, they experienced some activities were really challenging, like maybe riding a bike or climbing where you have to use one hand and one leg differently than the other, or even swimming. And I've had experiences with people who did some of these uh, awareness and movement lessons that really took them back to that time in their childhood where these patterns were uh, established. And they found after they reestablished them that those activities became possible for them again. That's wonderful. I can think of a lot of ways in which that could be a benefit to the people who have taken the course series. Who are you addressing, Garrett, in this series and who will it benefit? Well, of course, the real answer is everybody because everyone will benefit from going back and kind of refreshing and reliving and re-experiencing this time in life where you learned really out of curiosity and out of joy and out of exploring. Um, and I find that the people who come back and kind of repeat these series of classes, that they find that they get, they feel a real sense of rejuvenation. They re feel a real sense of um, uh, having their balance restored and their confidence in their, in their movement restored. So it really is for everybody. But I would say the people who might be most interested in it are those who are either watching their own or somebody else's baby develop because they'll be, be able to see um, and understand what the baby is learning. So certainly for parents, uh, for grandparents, for carers, for people who are with uh, babies during that first year of life. Um, it's also really a wonderful foundation for people who have really highly developed skills like athletes or musicians that um, often um, those skills develop certain patterns that then don't really serve them very well. And a lot of these lessons will kind of examine those patterns and help you to choose the ones that are more comfortable and more efficient for you. Um, a lot of people who have any kind of neurological disturbance find that going back to these early childhood movements gives them more ability to be able to overcome some of the challenges that they have in their own balance or their own movement or their own uh, kind of really feeling of self-confidence and potency in themselves. So I would say it's a, it's a real range of people who would, who would particularly be interested in the course, but I think everybody will enjoy going back and, and having that wonderful kind of revisit of what it was like to learn in a real joyful manner and to, to have an experience that isn't oriented toward having to achieve something or accomplish something, but just to enjoy moving. 
That's great, Garrett. That sounds wonderful. And can you speak some to what your inspiration was for this series? Why did you decide to teach this series? Well, I had a lot of um, uh, babies and infants come to my practice at the very beginning. So I learned right from the beginning to find ways to um, to help them. And what I noticed was that if you can kind of identify what stage of development someone has come to and then where the ba the ba barriers are to going on to the next stage, that often you can help a child through some kind of learning difficulty or learning struggle in a very early and easy manner so that they don't continue to get behind. So that was really how my interest developed. And I just really felt that um, it was so important to me to learn to um, to learn to be able to observe this that I started to to share it with other people and I started to share it with a lot of parents of children who had learning developments uh, difficulties and they found that through doing these lessons they could understand what their child was struggling with and could support the child in their development a lot uh, further so that is what that's the kind of foundation of what really made me uh, so curious about exploring this time of life and re-exploring this time of life. And I never tire of doing it. I never tire of teaching it. And I know that a lot of my students will come back to do it over and over again because they find it just really rejuvenating to, uh, to, to uh, repeat. Could you describe for um, anyone who might be listening, Garrett, what some of the lessons will involve? Like, what will it look like to take this course? What will it feel like? Okay, well, it's, it's going to feel like going back and, um, you know, you spent most of the first year of your life in a different relationship to gravity than you do right now. So a lot of the lessons will start, of course, lying on the floor. And one of the first things that um, a baby learns to do is to be able to balance and hold and direct its head. And so the lessons that will um, will also help to kind of reorganize um, how you use your head and your neck in relationship to your spine, which is a real problematic area for a lot of people, especially people spend as much time as some of us do in, in screens. Um, so that would be a that would be one example of a lesson that would also translate into everyday life. Um, then um, you, as a baby, you learn to be able to start to roll a little bit from side to side, and that was a, a real kind of beginning of independence, and that rolling movement is something that's very soothing and very um, wonderful to, to revisit as a, um, as a stage of, of learning. And then that rolling movement kind of freed you from being on your back. So you actually then learn to be able to roll onto your front. And this is also a big area of contention because a lot of advice is to put a baby on its belly before it can actually hold its head up. And this can be very uh, difficult for, for a baby. So this is also to understand the stages that contribute to that development to be able to um, hold your head up. And that also does help to balance these two sets of muscles, The uh, muscles in the front that kind of pull you in and down and the muscles in the back that help you stay um, stay upright and often they're not working in har harmony and these lessons will really help to harmonize the use of those lessons so that sitting and standing the accomplishments that you make towards the end of the first year of life um, also become easier so sitting and making transitions uh, from kneeling to from crawling to sitting to standing are also part of what will be offered in these lessons that I'll be teaching. Wonderful. Um, something that you touched on just now about the relationship between the flexors and extensors brings to mind that the ways in which babies learn, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, involves less muscular effort than for adults. As we mature, we use more and more muscular effort. And sometimes that muscular effort is to our detriment. Is that part of what will be learned in this course? Well, actually babies use a lot of muscular effort when they're really, you know, they're really trying to do something or trying to figure something out, but they use it in a very efficient manner. And I think that's what changes when we become adults is that we start to use certain muscles more than others. And they're the ones that then get tired and get weak. Whereas, 
um, a lot of these lessons will help help you to learn how you can spread effort so that it isn't a particular muscle or group of muscles that's always being used to do a task, but that you can call on more parts of yourself to help you to even the simple thing of holding your head up. So um, there is a efficiency, not really a change in the, the use of muscles, but an efficiency and a reorganization in how you use your muscular effort that just makes it more successful, more comfortable, and um, more um, uh, efficient. Great, thank you. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you would like to add about this upcoming course series? Well, I was hoping we'd get more questions from the audience, but it doesn't seem that we, that we have. Um, I'm trying to imagine what someone would, would ask if they were trying to decide whether to do this course or not. And I think that the, um, you know, one, one important thing I want to say is that the lessons are really fun and they're really easy. They're comfortable. They're going to be taught at a, a, a level of kind of uh, detail and slowness that everyone will be able to, to follow. And I think that um, that kind of learning through the Feldenkrais method, which is really not oriented towards measuring or towards reaching a goal, but oriented towards paying attention to yourself and how you how you organize yourself for movement. And that's, to me, one of the most important things that we can learn in life is that we can take care of ourselves. We can learn to feel and sense ourselves. And through expanding that aspect of our being, we're able to make more intelligent decisions like, you know, should I pick that box up or is it too heavy? There are things every day that we have to face where we are challenging ourselves and we're not always able to feel when that challenge is destructive and when it's actually something that's constructive. So I, I, I feel really the method is, the Feldenkrais method is really fantastic at this kind of self-learning and self-awareness and being able to um, sense and feel what's comfortable for you to do and to stay in that range of what's comfortable and easy because that's when life is more fun. Great, well, thank you so much, Garrett. And thank you to those of you who joined us. I'm so happy that you did. Um, the first free class of the series will be this Thursday, July 11th. And the early bird deadline is July 15th. So I hope you take advantage of that. And I hope we see you on July 11th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juniper. Thank you, everybody out there. <laughs>